Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Soulstorm casts, this side of East Yorkshire. And today I've got a 1 versus 1 on Outer Reaches. Playing as the Necrons, we've got Forgotten. And playing as the Imperial Guard, we have got Yang Wen Li. Yang is going to be opening with Triple Guardsman, a Tech Priest Engine Seer, a Plasma Generator, and a Infantry Command. Whereas the Necrons are going to go for the usual fistful of Builder Scouts and a couple of Plasma Generators, as well as a cheeky little ghost that have been placed around over on this side. I was going to say that this map is probably quite good for the Necrons, considering that they don't really have to traverse that far to get to the front lines, considering that Necron Warriors are quite slow. And also you've got this, well, this little space here where the Necron Lord can teleport around, which can just help it be an absolute nuisance. What is this? Is, it? is this Ikea? The, um, the Imperium done on a budget? Well, I, I quite like that. That's nice. I mean, why not? The Swiss have got to pull the finger out eventually. Is Ikea Swiss? Is it Swedish? It's, some, it's European, that's as far as I'm aware. Ever since Brexit, you know, I know nothing about what happens on the mainland. Not not across the channel, anyway. Yeah, we've got the ghost up here, so the Imperial Guard probably won't be going for the strategic point anytime soon. Not until the Force Commander, not Force Commander, the regular... The company commander, whatever he's called, when he comes out. He's not coming out. Oh, he's over here. There we go. He's going the long way around. I like it. A little bit a little bit stealthy. They think he's going to come around this way, but oh no, he's going to do a long way around and see what he can bash. Got some other scabs over here capturing these strategic points. And anything crazy coming out from you? A Necron Lord, indeed. So potential for harassment going on there, but as long as the Necrons can at least deny the Imperial Guard capturing too many strategic points, it should be all right. Force Commander, not Force Commander, good lord, a command squad. They're out here with a priest. They'll be sorting out these Builder Scarabs. They have managed to finish that obelisk. Down on this side, we do have these Builder Guardsmen. At least just trying to decap this before the Builder Scarabs can build something on top of it. Losing a couple of men in the process, but such is the way of the Imperial Guardsman's life. Now the Builder Scarabs have been chased away from this place over here. Losing two of their number. Now only one remaining, but that's totally fine. Totally free. Necron Lord going to teleport over here. See, oh, right in the middle of them. Going to try and scare them away. Goes to it. Shoots off one shot at them. But they decide to not go for them. So they're going to continue their meddling with these Builder Scabs. Got a, a Commissar in there as well now. Just for some additional shooting, slicing, morale power. Now we're going to look at this Ghost to it. And to be fair, when you want to get a building down as quick as possible... A Psyker isn't going to do it for you. You're going to have to get all the manly, barely men out in there. These guys are tanking the damage from the Ghost Turret, whereas these Guardsmen are going about their wicked and foul business. Necron Lord. Oh dear, look at that guy just bouncing off the wall like some sort of squash ball. Got Commissar with the Guardsmen over here as well, which is quite cool. Standing to attention. Laz Pistol, a Gurt. Got another Ghost Turret being built up. As some Necron Warriors are coming in. A good firing line over on this side. Necron Warriors not getting involved in close combat. Don't want to get involved with that Commissar. These guys are going to continue doing this. If anything, it just distracts these guys from tying up these Necron Warriors. But now it's happening. He's there. Priest getting knocked all the way over here. Necron Lord comes back for a second go. And it's a bit touch and go at the moment. The Imperial Guard certainly have the numerical advantage. But more Necron Warriors are coming over slowly but steadily. Warriors over here are on auto reinforce as well. Can he manage to survive? Is he going to get an extra one in? Just before, there we go, look at that. These guys having no morale, they'll do practically no damage to these guys, so may as well pull these guys back. There we go, morale has been broken on these guardsmen as well. So it does seem that the Necrons have managed to hold on. Command squad still giving it a good go there. But there we go, they're going to fall back once that priest has been taken care of. Ghost to it, now fully operational. Whoa, that was quite quite intense. Could have gone either way that. Especially if that one squad of Necrons fell over. I'm going to go in for another go, see if they can push the Guardsmen even further back, but they've regained the morale. They're still quite low at the moment. The regeneration rate isn't amazing. With every model lost, it is morale damage done. But they've got the numbers now. In fact, three more or less full squads almost. Are they getting any grenade launchers? Any tactical controls? No, not at the moment. 
Probably don't need it in all fairness. Not when you've got this kind of numerical superiority. Villascar's been taken care of. At least one of them were. We're trying to get that capping done. But the guardsmen are doing that decapping for them. Commander being slapped down. Only a commissar and a priest left. And the morale is failing. Has the commissar attached to the squad also gone down? Oh no, he's still there. Not quite able to shoot his own men yet. He's not quite got that rank. He's more of a cadet rather than a actual commissar. Only the priest left now. He's going to run away. And I mean, the guardsmen, they're, they're doing a good job. They're, they're denying this strategic point, but do the... What's, what's going to be the main benefit if the Necrons do build up an obelisk here? What's what's going to be their main goal for that? There we go. Go for this one. It's, it's a lot less defended. And, well, I mean, when you kill it, you can build up your own listing post on it. Which, wouldn't that be nice? Got triple Necrons coming out over here. But I suppose as well that the Guardsmen want to keep the pressure on these Necron Warrior squads just so they don't get to a certain size and number. They will take down the obelisk. Just as the Necrons start moving in. Morale being broken once again. Yeah, with, without their morale upgrade, these guys are going to have a real difficult time staying motivated to fight. And in fact, when being focused by Ball three squads as well, does look like that one full squad wipe happened there for the infantry of the Imperial Guard. Soon another squad looks like it'll be taken down as the Necrons look like they're trying to engage in melee. Unlike other squads, Necrons do not lose weapon accuracy when they're shooting and moving at the same time. At least that is what I think. If I'm not miscorrect over there, you can tell me if I'm wrong or not. Necron Lord going to get back up. He fell a little while ago. More Builder Scabs on the way, but no tier 2 at the moment. We've got 45% build speed and 70 compared to 92 and 20. Although with the sheer amount of money that Yang Wen Li has had to spend on reinforcing his boys... He's there. Oh, he's got tactical control. Right, so there we go. He's going to go for his death before dishonor. And also those grenade launchers. So heavily investing in the tier ones. But he is going for that battle armor. He's going for all the weapon upgrades. So he can actually delay that tier two by relying on the tier 1.5. This is... That's a lot of Necron Warriors. That's a scary amount. And also with the double plasma generator being built up here. There's lots of material for him to lose. Should he not defend it properly? Got two squads of guardsmen coming back over here. Commas are still there, still fighting fit. I don't know why I'm so concerned about the commas. I just, I just am for some reason. I want him to survive. Tech priest engines here. Wonderful repair rate. Going to see if we can keep that tactical control alive. Going to jump inside the, plus, uh, the listening post to add to the fire. Of the addition of grenade launchers, knocking these Necrons back. Have a little bit more of a difficult time. Also gives the command squad a little bit more room to manoeuvre around and get some stabby bits in there. Necron Lord unrelenting and a continue going up against that tactical control. But dear oh dear, just managing to save it does this tech priest engine see it. Another very close engagement. I must say the... Uh, if, if you're unfamiliar with the players, Yang Wen Li and Forgotten out. Well known in the community, very skilled players have been playing this game for as long as, well, anyone has really, as far as I'm aware. Quite frequent taker-parters of tournaments. If taker-parter is a word, a proper adjective. Necron Lord sliding away from that grenade launcher there. And now the siege begins. Guardsmen, now that they've been inspired by some propaganda. The morale is more or less doubled. Well, times 2.5. But speaking of morale, flayed ones coming around the side. Obelisk explodes them a little bit, separate them all. And dear oh dear, even the Commissar can't keep these guys too happy. Although, oh, I like that. <laughs> so because they're all so separated, when they... I assume that one of them went inside the listening post. Have you come out of here? How, that was very quick. Wonderful little bit of micro there. Got a heavy bottle to it over here. And the and the command squad continuing their campaign of harassment. Lord of the Necrons. Going to see if he can shake away that heavy bottle to it. 
as the guardsmen continue trying to capture things to show off their economy. It does seem that Yang Wen is trying to get that tier 2 money on the go. Down on this side, some more flayed ones are causing these guardsmen some issues. Obelisk really getting some good work in there. Quite often you'll see players of, of lower ranks forgetting that their obelisks have the shooty upgrade. And I do include myself in that. As Necrons are probably the only other race other than Orcs I actually get round to playing. But mind you, I do play a bit of Eldar as well, but that's because I'm a filthy Eldar player sometimes, and Double Dark Reapers is an easy opening. No Tier 2 for Forgotten at the moment. Are we seeing? There we go, Tier 2 for the Imperial Guard. Necrons have got their disruption fields, increasing their range damage. And, oh no, this priest falling foul of the flayed ones will be turned into a jacket I imagine at some point we're going to see uncommon valor so additional lads inside the command squad will be available and a ministorum temple as well further increasing the damage and overall survivability of the guardsmen and now all of a sudden this firing line of the guardsmen going to be a lot scary now that they're in tier 2 they can go for the targeting resolutions, they can go for the, the summary execution to keep them standing in line. The flared ones are quite a tricky thing to deal with, especially in these narrow corridors. Sort of tech priest engines here giving it a bit of a go there. Go on, Sunshine, get get, get involved. Or don't. I mean, <laughs> have you just been moved over here accidentally? Fair enough. Yeah, not only does the... Uh, if memory serves me, not only does the summary execution keep the morale safe for the guardsmen, I do believe it also increases either their accuracy or their fire rate. I'm not entirely sure. But has a whole host of benefits. Tactical control finally gets taken down there, and now these plasma generators are ripe for the plundering. Same with this listening post. So even with all these upgrades, the guardsmen are going to struggle a little bit. But realistically, they've got all the upgrades that they need for now. They don't need to Press too heavy into the old tech tree. Squad white for the flayed ones down here. Are we seeing? There we go. Tier 2 for the Necron Monolith. Also going to see a Forbidden Archive. And there we go. The John Cena beam has appeared. It's been a while since we've seen one. Believe it or not, I've been... Um, I'm not sure if, if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, because why not? I've been invited to uh, do a, a rap over the the John Cena song, or the, or the backtrack... Someone's making their own version of it, and I've been it's asked to if I could do a Necron Lord version of it. I don't know when that's going to happen. Don't know if it's going to be this year or this summertime or whatever, but keep an eye out for my budding musical career. <laughs> hmm. Uh, we've got Doom being witnessed over here. Necron Warrior's not too keen on it. Necron Lord phasing out of existence. Like how that was done just at the end of the attack animation. So he's still able to finish it off while keeping himself immortal. Got some zappies coming from another Psyker. Tech Breeze Engine Sears adding their last pistols. And that, to be honest, their range damage isn't terrible. The Necron Warrior is falling down as quick as you like. Gorse Turret will be required to do some good stuff. Got a heavy Gorse cannon upgrade on the way. Another Solar Pulse being shown. A weapon specialization as well, so these guys might actually probably be best served transitioning over to the Plasma Guns. As those are amazing against heavy infantry, Necron Lord not liking <laughs> all these robe-cladded individuals, these sweaty priests and psychers. There we go, teleports away. The guardsmen seem to just ignore the Cena beam for a moment. They think, you know what, we don't we don't care if you can't see us or we can't see you or whatever direction that goes in. We're just going to kill as many of our own as we can. And push forward. The meat grinder does not end here. By greater summoning court. So maybe... Ah, there we go. Some destroyers. At the moment, they've got nothing in the way of anti-vehicle. So that will cause them some concern. Although they do have the Curse Machine Spirit with the uh, Psyker. More priests ongoing. Anything crazy. Are we seeing a uh, mechanized command? No, but we are seeing a obelisk on the Imperial Guard's relic. It's very naughty. Current economies are 62 and 10, compared to 100% and 80. So although the Necrons seem to have been pushed back quite a lot, 
the Imperial economy is in absolute tatters. One destroyer comes out over here. Bashing someone in close combat. Yeah, that's probably not where he wants to be. Double destroyers, actually. I've been zapped by one priest, but no guardsmen around them to take advantage of that stun. So it might have been a bit of a bit of a wasted curse. But at least holds them off for a little bit. Obelisk goes down over here. Guardsmen just looking to see if they can reclaim some of their lost property. The Necrons are now moving into position. Got another curse going on down there, but that's all the curses they've got available for them at the moment. Necron Lord now comes in. A Oh, I like that. Phase shift goes on there, so no damage will be done to the Destroyer while it's stunned. These guys also have the option of just jetting away from somewhere. They've got the jump ability, so they can go or reposition if they want to. Heavy bolts have been placed down by the Tech Priest Engine Seers. Is two of them, so it will be built up quite quickly. I do believe that when you get two Tech Priest Engine Seers working together at building something, it's probably one of the fastest building rates in the game, if I'm not mistaken. As you can only really have two building... I mean, if, if you've got, like, all three Tech Priest Engine Seers building something, it doesn't actually change the speed from just two of them building up. Which is a fact that I learned from one of Jagus' videos. So cheers for that, pal. Old buddy of mine. Grand Squad not feeling all that great. Full squad wipe there. Crazy sacrifice, considering that they might not be able to get this destroyer, although, might they? No, nope, managed to slink away just in the nick of time. Oh, hold on, maybe. Oh, hold on. Oh, that's unfortunate. Poor lad. Is he going to repair himself? Can you repair yourself? Nope, you fade away into the darkness. It's understandable. Got some builder scams trying to hide in the corner here. <laughs> and they might, they might get it. They might survive. You never know. Tomb Spider coming over, doing a bit of recycling. And to be fair, this is going to save the Necrons a hell of a lot of money. They've got lots of squad cap left to fill up. And yeah, when I mean, what what they're not spending on units that can well obviously buy a, a Necron monolith, which is quite tasty. Got some immortals over here. There's no vehicles for them to get. But that will help them crack the listing posts. I can see a heavy weapons team. But this is going to be quite dangerous. Tomb Spider probably won't go into close combat. We'll just be on body collection duty. But he does have that particle whip. Oh, sorry, the particle projector even. Necronard beating back this dude, but manages to get oh, sucked back into the listing post. Necrons keep on keeping on. They've now got their disruption field level 2. So this is quite a scary looking firing line. Guardsmen not looking all that confident now. We are hearing the heavy weapons teams being set up. Going for that last cannon. So can take on those destroyers. Destroyers really making things difficult for the guardsmen. Especially with this Necron Lord going about his business. Tying up the firing lines. Guy over here going for these guys, but they're in heavy cover, so they should be all right. Last cannon now out. We found out the, out the wrong dudes. There we go. I do quite like the formal way that these guys are forming the, themselves up. Straight line. That's what we like to see. Listing post being slapped about. Guardsmen over here looking to finish off these builder scarabs. But the Necrons are kind of split up at the moment. They've got their Immortals over here doing a bit of economic damage. They've got their Destroyer, which I assume was killed at some point. So a little bit separated at the moment. If well, there was a time to strike for the Guardsmen, now is the time. Well, to be honest, that's what they've been doing. But they keep on going for those grenade launchers. I'm not sure about it. I'd reckon that the Plasma Guns would be the way forward. I mean, yeah, the Plasma Guns... Are, though, to be fair, one volley does knock them all over. So that's not... I suppose it goes down to preference, really, doesn't it? Got double heavy weapons teams here, back to back. But a little bit overextended. One gets killed -ed. Another one also soon to be added to the death pile. Heavy bolts have been popped up in the middle of combat. Guardsmen trying to do some sort of bayonet charge over this way. Not going to do all that well, though. Plasma generator going to be rebuilt over here, but Necronod will sniff it out. See if he can do something about it. Got some wraiths coming in as well. 
just to keep on or keep those guardsmen on their toes. And you've got to respect it, man. The the chance of the guardsmen coming on top at the moment is quite low. I mean, looking at the economy, 76 and 95 compared to 70, well, 66 now and 18. It's that the potents aren't favourable, but the fact that he's able to keep these guys alive and he's been able to do what he's able to do with so little is, is quite impressive. It does show the quality and calibre of the player behind the keyboard here. Guardsmen look like they're going to be transporting themselves over to, into this infantry command. Got to save the IKEA shopping centre. Those meatballs won't save themselves. And here they come. They're now going for a little bit of a plasma gun. Necrons teleporting back home. Or over here. Or teleporting somewhere. Dark times abound, but they will continue all the same. Faith in the Emperor is all you need. Double Destroyer's on the way. Necronog teleports in. Looks like he's not going to throw out any beams. Just going to do some old slicing and dicing. Guardsman Bayonet charging this Destroyer. That's what you like to see. No fear in their eyes. Another Solar Pulse comes down. Necron's over here destroying some more economy. Missile launcher over here. Going to do its best, but the Mortals will come over and sort it out. There's a last stand, baby. We've got one Psyker in here. Going to give a big zap to that Necron Lord, but phase shifting out the way is just going to regen all that health. Incredibly difficult to take out the Necron Lord once he's in his tier twos. And he's... Oh, what is it? He's got his Forbidden Archive online. As when they get that... He hasn't got his tier three health. So as we all know that when the Necrons tear up, the Necron Lord's health increases. But still, it's tier two Necron Lord, man. It's when he really pops off. Well, fall of Ikea. Never mind Nikea. But it, it was a really solid effort from uh, Yang Wenli down. To be honest, both players, like I always say, that, that amazing stuff. But it was just really competent the way that he was able to you know, like the falling back and the and the forming of the new firing lines and the just fighting for every single inch of land was just really impressive to watch. But cool, nice one. If you enjoyed the channel, have a look at the old Patreon. One pound a month gets you one extra game a week. And there is also a Discord. Links in the description. Disco, dis, Discord things happen and it's cool and amazing. Woo! Anyway, mine's been Mr. Landshark. Pleasure as always, never chart. I will see you in a bit. Peace.